get out your colored pencils because today I will show you how to draw a dragon eye shading and blending with colored pencils. I wanna give a shout out to my student Mila for this concept for this video. We're in the middle of drawing eyes in my classes and Mila is a student who always thinks outside the box and tries something different. So I'm drawing this dragon eye for her and spoiler alert, I have never in my life attempted to draw a dragon eye. So perfect time to try it for the first time is on a YouTube video for every one of my students and anyone else who watches my video to see. All you need are colored pencils. I'm using just a basic 12 pack of Crayolas, an eraser, a pencil, and a piece of drawing paper or a sketchbook page. If you wanna support a public school teacher's side hustle, hit that subscribe button to support my channel. Starting out, I'm going to draw the eyelid first. And the great thing about dragons is they don't exist, so I can make it any shape that I want. I do want it to look kind of angry. I wanna have that fierce look like it's about to breathe fire. And so I do wanna make the shape kind of sharp. I am adding a little tear duct on the left-hand side. I'm not sure if dragons have them, but I enjoy drawing it, so I'm gonna include it. The pupil, I'm trying to make a shape that is not a human eye. So I'm thinking something really sharp, like something like a really skinny, long ellipse, or more of a diamond shape like I'm doing here. So I want it to immediately look like a reptile, an animal, not like a round circular human eye. And the sky's the limit. You can really make it whatever shape you would like. I'm adding a crease because the eye would be 3D. Um, so I'm adding some sort of crease. It wouldn't look like it would with a human. And I'm kind of just guessing as I go, adding some lines that I'm gonna add scales to. I do want it to look three-dimensional. It's not the same as a human face, but you could look up reptile images. And if you look up dragon drawing, I am certainly not the first person to do this. There's plenty of images to look at. So now that I have basic directional lines to give it movement and depth, I'm gonna map in some scales. And again, I'm no expert, so I'm adding some bigger ones on the top to kind of follow the shape um, of the crease that I added on my top eyelid. And I'm just gonna kind of play around with different shapes. Um, I like the small scales on the bottom. I think it kind of gives it an eyelash effect. Um, and again, I'm just kind of making this up as I go. You could certainly spend a lot of time looking at images online of dragons. And every shape I do, I'm trying to make it look like a reptile or make it have sharp kind of intimidated edges. Maybe dragons are sweet, but from what I've seen on TV or read in books, it's not the type of animal you wanna like cuddle up to. So that kind of snaky um, scale-like quality and then anything I can add to make it look spiky is gonna go into that effect I'm going for. I really am just making up shapes with my pencil. I know they're gonna change as I add color. Um, I'm looking at multiple images. I'm just kind of seeing what's been done before. Looking at up close images of reptile eyes is another way to go if you want it to be more realistic. I'm just trying something new and I'm gonna experiment with blending color. I wanna add small little spikes to the bottom so it looks like if you reached out and touched the eye. I mean, how could you get that close to a dragon to do that, right? But like the eyelashes aren't hair, they're fierce spikes. I'm adding a few shapes that I'm gonna leave for highlights. And now it's time for the easiest part. I'm taking a black colored pencil and I'm filling in my pupil as dark as possible. So I'm using black, but I'm also gonna add white to give it a little bit more dimension. So when shading, if you've never done this before, I highly recommend doing a value scale. And I'll put a link above to one I've done with the pencil. Um, and so you can see I'm pressing down as hard as I can in the edges, and then I'm letting up a little bit in the center. Take a white and blend here, and it makes a really great gray that just gives the pupil a little bit more dimension, like there's light reflecting as your dragon is flying through the air. And you can see I did leave a little white area um, that's the highlight where light would be shining. I'm going back in and making sure my shape is as nice and neat as possible. Before I move on to the inside of my eye, which is like the iris and the sclera. I think I'm saying that right. So in a human eye, the white part of the eye combined. Now, my theme is fierce, angry dragon. So I want my eye to have lots of warm colors. Um, so I'm focusing more on like a red orange color scheme. If you've seen my videos before, you know I blend tons and tons of colors. So I never limit myself to just one. So if you're ever using colored pencil and you want something to be, for example, red, that doesn't mean you're only gonna use that color. 
So start with the base color of what you want your eye to be overall. And again, it's imaginary, so make it whatever color you'd like. Blue, purple, pink, black, whatever. And you're using your base color to shade in kind of your first set of values. Values is the lightness or darkness of a color. Make sure to check out that value scale video if you're like, huh? And so I'm using my base color red and I'm putting around both sides, pressing down as hard as I can, and then I'm blending out lightly towards the center. You see me use my eraser because red um, is showing some of my pencil lines and I want my craftsmanship to be at my highest level. So I'm using my pencil to erase before I go over it with the colored pencil. So I'm pressing down hardest on the edges and I'm getting a little bit lighter as I fade towards the pupil. If you're a beginner, you can keep it simple and just do smooth shading like in this first step and then mix a few colors on top. But because I've done this before and all the reptile and dragon eyes I, were, I was looking at before I started drawing had a lot of lines and textures in the eye. It's almost like the eye was reflecting flames. And that's the really cool thing about an eye is that you're looking out, but your eye is also reflecting the light in the environment that you, your dragon, or whatever creature or person you're drawing is in. So that's why I love teaching drawing eyes because it's fun, it's satisfying, you feel good and successful about your artistic abilities, and you have so many ways to show creativity. So I'm just adding a few lines of my base color. I've never done this before, so I'm kind of hesitant as to whether I like them or not. And so everything I do is a little bit lighter than normal since this is my first attempt at drawing a dragon eye. So shading is one thing and blending is another. So I'm taking my second color from my warm color scheme and I'm just overlapping the work I've already done. So red's the base color. I've laid the groundwork of my shading from dark to light and now I'm taking my orange and blending into it. I'm not covering up my value by pressing down the same level of pressure. I'm doing the same thing I did with red but I'm just lightly overlapping what I've done before. So it's already starting to look 3D and I just love these warm colors. I am extending a little bit further towards my pupil. I realized that area I drew for my white highlight, I covered right up. So that's a little bit of a fail, but I'm not gonna let it stop me. And yellow is my favorite color. Anytime I do a warm color blend, I always end with yellow because it just brightens things right up. I'm trying to erase that highlight. You can erase a little bit with colored pencil, but not like a whole area. I kind of map in another one, but it looks awkward. So I'm just gonna go for it and see if I can create a three-dimensional effect without that little awkward highlight. Every time I add a color, you can see I'm extending a little bit further towards the pupil to give it that rounded three-dimensional effect. Like it's anchored or shadowed towards where it goes back towards the skin and it sticks out or bulges towards the center. So that's where like my lightest values and lightest colors will be. I've used all warm colors that you would expect in this color scheme, red, orange, and yellow. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of an unexpected color and I'm gonna create more of a shadow with this blue. And so the blue is giving it a little bit more dimension in your color and it's also making it look more three-dimensional. Look how it's going like back into space and also that blue reacting with the red is just magic. So when using colored pencils, I always recommend try an unexpected color in your color scheme and blend it and see what happens. Most of the time it will work well and contrast is key. And I like doing a color like this instead of black. Now I will use black too, but it just gives it a little bit more depth than just the flat warm color scheme. So one thing I wish I did, I'm looking at some dragon drawings and there was like a white line around the pupil. Again, dragons don't exist, so maybe this is inspired by other reptiles, but I saw it in a lot of the art and a lot of the drawings I saw online. Um, I wish I left it all white, but I'm gonna outline it in red to really give the pupil emphasis. And here's the black. I always use it when using colored pencils to give that extra shadow and that extra dimension. And then I'm going back with red to make sure that is kind of the main color I started with. It's more of a yellow eye than anything else, but that's okay. It's okay for this to change as you make art and for your ideas to shift. I'm putting a little bit of black in the pupil and I'm actually feeling pretty good about that dragon eye. I didn't leave room for that little tear duct area or the area where like the scales and the skin of the dragon meet the eye and I love mixing red. So I'm taking the black to kind of outline the top lid so I can get the highest level of contrast possible. I'm also, you know, once I start blending, I can't stop. So I'm trying out brown to see. It doesn't make a huge difference, but I do like the warmth of it. I think it tones down the black just a little bit and adds to that nice warm color scheme um, that I was able to get in the pupil. 
So blending is always just me adding as much color as possible. Now this red in the corners of the eye, I love doing that when drawing human eyes. And so I thought, why would a dragon not have this? So I do it red mixed with white to give it that pink kind of fleshy look. Um, and I'm shading darkest in the corners. I'm going back with that blue because at this point I'm just feeling really happy with the shape. And now that I have like the values, the depth and the color scheme work out, work to hell, I'm just going back and forth asking myself, can things be pushed further as far as, far as how dark things are and how many colors I'm blending. I feel really good about it. And so I think it's time to move on to the background to make sure I like the background as much as I'm enjoying the eye. I'm gonna keep things pretty typical and my dragon will be green. Um, your dragon might be any color you would like. It could even be grayscale. And so with these scales that I drew, the concept is pretty similar to shading a sphere, but I'm not being as careful because I don't want it to look so 3D you could pick it up like a marble. I want it to look like it's all a part of the same surface, but also has dimension. So I'm taking the base color, which is the darkest green I have, outlining, shading dark, leaving a light area in the middle. So that's gonna make each scale have its own dimensional effect. I don't want it as dimensional as the eyeball, because if you were to touch both, the eyeball would be more 3D than the scales, but I don't want it to be just one flat color. One thing I know already, this is a lot of repetition. I'm doing a lot of the same things over and over. This shape is slightly different than the scales I did first, but it's the same concept. I'm doing darker around the edges and fading in so the light looks like it's hitting it in the dead center. This is just kind of an easy way to get your light source the same each time and just to really make it look like three-dimensional scales. So you're seeing me do this a lot and it looks good. You know, it's shading. It's a little sloppy, but that's because I know I have so much to do. I will go back and tighten things up, but really blending is where things come to life. So that yellow serves two purposes. One, it makes it look more dimensional and it gives it more depth, but do you see how it also connects and ties to the red of the eye? So in a work of art like this, having contrast or things that are different are key, but I do want it to have togetherness, unity, um, and really feel like it's the same kind of work of art and not two separate things. So I think the yellow does a great job of connecting the warm color scheme to the cool color scheme of the background. So you can see I filled it in. Um, and I didn't really leave white a little bit, so I'm taking the white colored pencil, and white for this is just meant to kind of blend and make it have a little bit more unity. I am going in because I feel like it needs a shadow, and I'm taking that same blue I used in the eye. If you have like a 100 pack of colored pencils, maybe you have like a darker green, but for me, um, I'm using just the standard blue, and I'm giving it even more dimension. Is it a lot of work? Yes. To get detail in colored pencils, it is a ton of work. That's why it's called art work. So the hard work will pay off. I know it seems like a lot, but paying attention to each of these areas of light and dark, paying attention to blending is key to really making a dynamic colored pencil artwork. Also, I'm having fun. If you're not, turn on some music, put on a podcast, or just embrace the activity of shading and blending. For these teeny tiny scales that I drew, I'm speeding up the speed of the video to two times the speed I actually drew it. So if you're like, wow, she's going fast. Yeah, I'm going twice as fast as I did in real life because I'm repeating the same thing I did above, but at a much smaller scale. So I'm still starting with that base green, darker on the edges, fading lighter to the center. I'm gonna go back and fill it in with yellow. I'm not gonna do the white, and I'm gonna show you a little trick with the yellow. I don't have to be as careful so the base color, you're really doing a lot of your work, and then you can go back in with the yellow and be a little more careless. So I'll kind of show you what I mean by that once I do my second row of spikes. So I'm having my scales change shape as they extend out from the eye. Again, it's a different shape, but the technique is the same. So you can see me outlining these scales down at the bottom that are slightly different too. And again, same technique, it's just a little bit of a slightly different size and shape. So you could change your color scheme, but I'm gonna keep mine consistent for now with the dark green, fill it all in with yellow, and then blue for a shadow. So the yellow step, I don't have to be as careful with. So I can take that yellow, and I don't wanna say scribble, but it is a scale, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. And because I did the hard work of laying out the value and the shape with that green, I can fill the rest in with yellow and then create my shadows um, with the blue. So I'm moving a little bit faster. I'm not staying inside the lines quite as much because it's all kind of the same color scheme and it's okay if it's slightly, I don't wanna say messy, 
here it is slightly textured because it is definitely scales. It does seem like a lot doing what, three, possibly four colors for each shape, but I know that creating that level of blending and dimension will pay off. So because you've seen me repeat the same technique, and if you watch me do it fairly slow on three different sizes and shapes, I'm gonna pick up my pace, and this is a time lapse. So this is way faster than I did it. I mean, it really did take me a while. I would say, I don't know, you're gonna watch me do this for 30 seconds, and it took me 10, 15 minutes. So I knew going in that the scales would take the most time. It's a lot of repetition. It's just sticking to it, sticking to the color scheme, staying inside my own lines. I'm gonna slow things back down again because I do want a little bit of contrast or some differences um, in that spiky little area I added. So it's very similar into the shape of the scales I made, but I want it to have like a different effect. So I'm gonna keep it very simple and do the same thing I did with the pupil. I'm using black to create like a really nice dark outline and then I'll fill it back in with white. So you saw me do this in the pupil, so I think it's a good throwback to that moment. The shape kind of mirrors the scales. The blending mirrors the pupil. So there's contrast, but there's also, also unity within the work of art. I always love to include, whether I'm drawing or painting, is I really love to push the contrast as much as possible. How dark can I get this area? How bright can I get this? And using the black colored pencil, I'm just gonna go back to some of those scales that I already filled in and make some of the edges a little darker. Notice I'm not like outlining them entirely. I'm thinking if they overlapped, what area would have more of a shadow? I'm not gonna do it to all of it. Um, I will go off the page a little bit and kind of elude that the scales continue. I'm not gonna fill up this whole little piece of paper with scales. I could, but I'm not going to. And if it doesn't look like it fits, you can always take your base color and then go back in. So I decided to do something kind of weird underneath these spikes and I'm gonna change up my scales a little bit. So it's like the top of the dragon eye has a different style of scales and then as it goes under, almost, you know, like there would be an eyebrow up there and the skin underneath a human eye would be softer and a little different. So I'm playing with that idea and I'm using that blue that I use for the shadow and I'm drawing teeny tiny little scales similar to what I did underneath the eyelid. Now the reason why I'm starting with blue is I don't want to go back and have to redraw the shadow. So my plan is if I draw the shape in blue first, that will be like my darkest area and I can map them out and I'm trying to make them look round so they're smaller as they go into the corner and then the big area down at the bottom, I'm making the circles a little bigger. That's another way to create depth. You don't have to shade, you can just change the size relationships of the shape that you're creating. So once you have whatever area of scales, if you wanna do small scales like this, outline it with your darkest color first and then I'm gonna go back in with my green and just kind of lightly color over it. And then I will do the same a little bit with the blue just to give it a little bit of a different color. Green is still gonna be the main color, but I think having that blue, again, it's a little bit different, but still within the color scheme. So you can see there's movement created. It has a little bit of depth. Um, and I'm hoping this will cut down on some of the work. And I did speed this up again. So if it looks like I'm going really fast, yeah, I sped things up. So going back in with my base green, I already have this time using the blue, the value and the shape mapped out. So like I did with the yellow and the other shapes, I can just kind of lightly go over the green so that the color changes, but the shape and the um, shading will not. I will go back in um, and make a few changes, make a few more areas of emphasis using that black to really give it that dimension. And that yellow, of course, is gonna brighten things up and tie everything together. I'm really loving the blue in that scale, or those scales down there. So I'm taking the lighter blue and just blending slightly into the eye. Just again, looking for areas that I can create more dynamic color schemes, create more depth, and create more unity. And so this is just a nice kind of touch to give the eye more of that. Okay, I'm racing this weird area I added. I feel like the left side is awkward and I wanna be finished. I feel like I've done some really nice work, but I don't feel completely happy with the overall shape of the eye. I want it pointy, I want it sharp, I want it to look like an angry dragon, so I'm gonna add those pointy, sharp lines. This is a really fun way to explore just a detail of a creature or an animal. It's such a great way to explore blending color and color scheme, and because the animal creature does not exist, it doesn't really matter exactly how you organize everything, and that's very freeing. I am so happy with the points I added. I think 
it makes the overall shape of it less awkward since I'm not filling up my whole page. That would have been another option, but I still would have this issue with this area. Um, I'm using the same colors I did before to kind of fill it in with some scales, some shading, and just like an area of the eye that would go in towards like, what is it, the snout? <laughs> the mouth of the dragon, or whatever this creature actually is. Going back with my red, just to push those colors even more and make that eye just scream out at you. This is an artwork of an eye, so I wanna make sure that area has all the finishing touches. I am adding a little bit of red to that first row of scales. I don't wanna overwhelm myself by adding it to others, but look how it really pops. Red and green are complementary colors, so they work really well together because they're opposites. So it's a great way to create a pop of color that's different. Okay. I'm feeling really happy. I am proud that I did something outside my comfort level. So thank you students for always having better ideas than me. If you're interested in more drawing tutorials, check these out. If you want to see what my students are up to, check out my Instagram at thatartteacher underscore Machado and my blog thatartteacher.com. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me.